Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick video focused on how to manipulate widget properties using the AppSnit store. And in order to do this, I'm going to show you how to write some declarative or reactive code. My name is Confidence, and without further delay, let's get started. All right. Taking a look at the demo application we have on the screen right here, we have a text widget, which is text1, and we also have an input widget here, which is input1. And what we would want to do is we want to manipulate the state of the text widget based on the inputs to the input widget right here. If you're familiar with programming, you may want to do this using the imperative coding style. Uh, what I mean by imperative coding style is this. I'm just going to quickly create a JS file and show you what I mean. So this is utils. And right here, you may want to write some code like uh, text1.text should be equal to input1.text. And this is how you go about doing this using the imperative coding style or the imperative um, approach. Yeah, this is what you are definitely familiar with and you would expect that this would work in AppSmith. But unfortunately, this does not work. You are required to write code in a reactive or declarative style. And that's how I'm going to be showing you how to do that in this video. All right. So in order to set this up, first, I need to clean up this function and make sure that we have some clean file and we can head back to the text widget and do some setup. So for the text value, what I need to do here is to declare it to have a state based on a different entity. And for example, we can use the absent store. So this is going to be absent.store.text. And whatever the value of text saved in the store is, that would be supplied as the text value to the text widget we have right here. So that's how to do it using the declarative approach. You have declared that you want the value of the text widget to be whatever is in the absent store and that's taken care of. And let's also go on to set up some other properties. So for the background, we can also do something like appsmith.store.background. All right. And lastly, let's do the same for the text color. So this is going to be appsmith.store.color. All right. This looks good. Uh, the last thing we need to do here to set everything up is to write a JavaScript function that would handle saving the values to the store inside of these respective keys. So we have the text key, we have the background key, and we have the color key. So let's go into write some JS. So we have the utils file right here. I'm just going to rename this function to save, for example, and we need to pass in some key value pair. This is just going to be a string um, that we are representing with key value and we can go in to extract the key value from that string. So I'm going to say const key and value. This is going to come from key value dot split. And we can split using a delimiter of an equal to sign and that will get assigned to key value. And now that we have the data extracted in the key value variable, we can go save it in the AppSmith store. So we can use the store value function and pass in the key and also the value and that would get saved. So this is how to do it using the declarative approach. The last step is to hook it up to the inputs. All right. So for the inputs, whenever the text changes, we need to go ahead to execute the save function and pass in the current text of the input to be the key value parameter we are passing into the save function and this this looks good so we can go ahead to test this out so i can say something like text equal to my text widget and you can see that that value actually shows up we can go to change the background so we can say something like background equals to yellow and you can see we have yellow background showing up. We can also change the color. I think that was the last variable we configured. So let's say color. And we can set this to red. And you can see we have been able to manipulate the widget states using the input. And this has been done using the declarative or the reactive approach, whereby we declare that the value of the widget be tied to a different entity instead of directly assigning the value into the widget itself. 
So this is how to manipulate widget states using the absent store. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to take your questions. Alright, this will be all for today's video. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.